Hello, have you ever been made to feel that you're over the hill or past it as you're approaching your 50s and 60s? Does life after retirement or redundancy hold out no great hope for you? Well, if so, this new series, Life Begins At, aims to change your and other people's attitude to the ageing process. Over the next six weeks, we hope to show that with a positive attitude, years can be added to life and life to years. We start on the other side of the world, on the island of Tonga in the South Pacific, where Davina Payne met a retired couple from North Wales who are spending two years working for an organisation called Voluntary Services Overseas, or VSO. Most of their lives, teachers Bill and Elizabeth Beatty have lived in Old Colwyn in Gwynedd. But in October 1992, they were accepted for two years' work with VSO in Tonga, more than 11,000 miles away. It's very worthwhile, it's a challenge, it's something different, and there's a great deal of satisfaction to be had out of it. Anybody who's interested in doing this work uh, should look at it as a challenge and look to get as much out of it um, at, the, at the same time as give as much as you can. The general reaction was really that they were a bit nuts, not for going, but for leaving the house for me and Ed to look after it. <laughs> I'm really proud of the fact that Mum and Dad have done this. And I know that they've thoroughly enjoyed it and it was well worth um, sort of the commitment that they've made. Dad's always been active since he finished school. So, you know, I thought maybe they would do something. And they, well, they deserve to. They've got to manage with fairly basic conditions. I mean, if you're the sort of person who needs to have a hairdryer at hand at every moment of the day, then probably VSO is, isn't for you. But if you can manage to adapt and, and be able to cope without running water and electricity from time to time, then it's for you. The Kingdom of Tonga in the South Pacific consists of approximately 150 islands, most of which are uninhabited. There are three main island groups, Vavau, Ha'apai and Tonga Tapu, where I went to see the Beatties. They live and work in the capital of Tonga, Nuku Alofa. This town is about the size of Colwyn Bay, where Elizabeth and Bill have spent most of their lives. Tonga is a different world from ours. Most of the population work in fishing or farming. It's a Christian country, having accepted Christianity from the West over 300 years ago. Western-style constitutional, legal and religious systems blend with ancient Polynesian customs and rituals. Queen Saloti put Tonga on the world map when she endeared herself to the British public at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. Queen Saloti's son, King Taufa Ahau Tupo IV, rules Tonga's 90,000 people today. Sixty-two-year-old Bill and 57-year-old Elizabeth Beatty applied to VSO in 1992 after hearing about a suitable job for a PE teacher in Tonga from their daughter Catherine, a VSO employee. After an in-depth selection process, they were accepted for a two-year placement. I think there have been a few people along the way who said, you're mad, or why do you want to go to Tonga? Or, Where is Tonga? I think um, inside us the, there was this, not necessarily an ambition, but a willingness to, to go and try something different. Bill has been asked to set up a PE course for trainee teachers who will be working in primary and secondary schools. Liz is teaching English and assessing students on teaching practice. The aim of both jobs is to help Tonga become self-sufficient in training teachers without having to send them overseas. 10% of VSO's volunteers are over 50, some are in their late 60s. 
It was about 10 years ago that, w that we started really realizing that, that there was a, a pool of people there who had a very valuable contribution to make. They have got enormous amounts of career and life experience behind them. They've often shared their family responsibilities. They've not usually got the same financial worries that probably younger people have got. And generally, they're, they're very mature. What they are doing is transferring skills and building capabilities. But in addition to that, they are also able to promote international understanding and they get enormous amount out of the experience themselves, both personally and, and professionally. The image of VSO is, is still that of a school leaving organization. Um, and, and I think that's probably particularly the case with the older generation who, who obviously were very affected by the early publicity when VSO was formed. And so we do have a job to change the perception within the general public and probably particularly that sort of age range to explain that we're not that anymore. We are a broader based organization that takes people from 20 to 70 who are skilled and experienced people. The Beatties live in a small house in Tonga. It's very basic, but they say it's adequate. We have a bathroom and toilet indoors and uh, we have quite a good kitchen, so we don't really lack for anything. Uh, we don't have a telephone, but I feel that that's a good thing in some ways, having been at the end of a phone for many years. And uh, we don't have any hot water in the house, but the climate is generally very warm. And uh, whereas in the winter the water does, the water coming from the taps and the shower does feel a bit cold, um, it's, a, it's a very small price to pay for the lovely weather that we have outdoors. So Anna's obviously had a nice time. Every weekday morning, one of their students, who also conducts the church choir, calls round for breakfast. Do you have a good weekend? Yes, yes, yes. What were you up to? Uh, here they are. There's a licking of my assignment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> made me good. The dreaded dread assignments. Yeah. That's plenty. Every morning, since then, I met them in the very first time. They invite me for breakfast in the morning. And since then, I always come here at 7 o'clock to have a nice breakfast. <laughs> British breakfast? Yeah, British breakfast. European breakfast. <laughs> The teacher training college is a stone's throw away from the Beatty's house. The buildings used to be a hospital. The assembly is similar to that held in British schools, but all of these students are over 18. Some are in their 30s and 40s. It's a musical occasion. Tongan people love singing. If I say forward, run forward. If I say backwards, run backwards. Okay? Alright, off you go. Forwards. Left. Right. <laughs> backwards. <laughs> forwards. Left. Run right. <laughs> backwards. <laughs> and stop. No. All the first year, the first year that they come into the college. They all do a one-year course in physical education, which is based for primary school work. And what I did this morning was take them through a short demonstration lesson suitable for primary school children in Tonga. Not necessarily elsewhere, but in Tonga. They like sport in Tonga, don't they? Oh, they love it. It's, uh, it's an essential part of their lives. But in the past, it's been mainly recreation. That's what it's looked at, and convincing them that it's an essential part of a physical education or an education system is, is difficult. But they're getting there, slowly. 
As sport is an important part of life in Tonga, a school's athletics competition is held every year in the national stadium. The BTs were invited to join the guests of honour, representing the college. All the secondary schools send the whole school to support their team. And they're all in their uniforms and they all have cheerleaders. And the atmosphere is wonderful. Something you don't see at home these days. And the standard of the athletics, considering the amount of time they put into the training, is very, very good. They start training fortnight, three weeks before the event, and then when the event's over, that's it till next year. VSO employees should not be out of pocket during their placement abroad. They get a local wage, return airfares, as well as a resettlement grant on their return home. VSO pays national insurance contributions so employees are covered while they're away. They also get medical insurance. How are you? We are fine, thank you. How are you? Fine. Right, this afternoon we are doing our English. What is our subject? English. Right. I help out mainly in the English department, but I do assessments of students out on teaching experience, and I also do some uh, lecturing in the education department. The children here seem very well behaved compared to Britain. They are extremely well behaved, and discipline really is not a problem here. Um, I can't give any specific reason for it. All I can say is the discipline in the homes is is a very it's, it's very important to them given you an A for that lesson because uh, there are so many good points about it. Um, I liked especially the way you encouraged all the children mm. and I know that in Tonga children love to clap, they like that sort of encouragement. Working for VSO has enabled the Beaties to experience a very different culture from Britain. The pace of life is relaxed. They started using a bicycle to get around and progressed to this very old motorcycle. I think um, somebody who works for the SO has to be a certain type of person. And if you're continually missing the luxuries of life, the real luxuries of life, then um, I think you're on a non-starter. It's remarkable what people do put up with, and, and I'm always surprised at, at how people adapt to quite difficult living situations. But, as I say, most people seem to manage that without any, any trouble at all. We take people from a very wide range of, of disciplines, from carpenters and plumbers to doctors and nurses, general agriculturalists, business advisors, computer specialists, almost anything you can think of which we are likely to be requested for. We do take very special care at selection to really look at how well suited people are in terms of their adaptability and flexibility because you have to be, above everything else, very flexible as a volunteer and be willing to cope with all sorts of uh, conditions and situations. So it's something that we, we take in, into careful account at the selection stage. They must be quite unusual to, to suddenly up their roots, you know, if they're in the third age, the last part of their life? Yes, I think what, what happens is, is that they've had a fulfilling career or, or time within the UK or wherever, wherever, and they want to give something back and also to discover a bit more about the world outside Europe. A very colourful part of Tongan life is the flea market on Saturday mornings. Very friendly people, are very hospitable people. We, we've been made to feel very, very much at home in Tonga, both 
in our social life and at our work. And we've been very happy. I don't think they have the pressures on them that we have in the West. Their, their lives are quite easy going and um, they don't fill their lives with unnecessary worries. It can be quite a noisy place. Uh, in fact, there are lots of Falangi people, white people, there on a Saturday, and you can be sure of meeting somebody. And uh, there are there are good second-hand clothes there, and I think a lot of Falangi people just go there for the fun of it, because the clothes are cheap, and sometimes you can pick up a really good bargain. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Do you feel healthier living out here than back in Wales? I suppose in certain ways, yes. Uh, certainly the warmth is good for the body. And uh, yes, I suppose in certain ways you would be healthier. But on the other hand, I like a variable climate. So I don't know whether it would be good for me to live in this climate all the time. For certain people, I'm sure it would be very, very good. You don't see any people here with arthritis or diseases like that. The staple diet of Tongans consists of root crops. The local produce is abundant, but despite the tropical climate, fruit and vegetables are seasonal. There are few imported products. Malo! Okay, whoops. The Beatties do most of their shopping at the market in Nukualofa on a Saturday morning. Vegetables are very cheap and the atmosphere is relaxed and friendly. On Saturday afternoons, the Beatties often play tennis. The British High Commission have been very good to us. They, uh, they have a grass tennis court there and they run sessions on a Tuesday night and a Thursday night and a Saturday morning and they invite various people to go and play and we've been, Elizabeth and I have been lucky enough to be invited there and not just the tennis, it's the social thing as well, you, you meet people, you meet Tongans, you meet Australians, you meet New Zealanders, you make a lot of friends to it. There are many islands and beaches within easy reach of the capital of Tonga. This is about 20 minutes away by boat. We used to go to the beach a lot more when we first came here. Uh, in fact, we couldn't keep away from it. Every, every spare moment we had, even when we just had push bikes, we were off to the beach. Um, but now, somehow, we seem to have got into a routine very similar to our routine at home. And um, we've got quite accustomed to our own home. And very often we just stay at home and read. Since she's been in Tonga, Elizabeth has learnt tapestry and weaving. My hobbies and what I do out of college are very similar to Bill. We play tennis or um, Losena. Uh, my friend comes round for a chat with us. So there's, there's always plenty to do. Yeah. For me personally, um, I will miss them so much. <laughs> You've made some very good friends. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> How will you feel when they've gone? Uh, it will be very hard. A familiar sound in Tonga is a repetitive banging of wood. It's the making of the traditional tapa cloth. It's the bark of the mulberry which is treated. I'm not too sure how it's treated, but it's certainly dried. And before it's beaten, it's soaked overnight in a bowl of water. Uh, then the, the person who's beating the tapa sits at a piece of wood um, with a flattened top. And she places the strip of mulberry bark on this flattened piece of wood and beats it with a flat wooden mallet. And she beats this strip, which is about an inch and a half in width, until it becomes maybe eight or nine inches in width. Uh, when she has several pieces like that, she glues them together. And the, a full tapper is 50, 50 feet long. 
by 12 feet wide. And then they, they do their own family traditional pattern on it. They paint it on. Tonga is heavily influenced by the Christian missions. On Sundays, most families can be seen in church. Alcohol can only be drunk in the hotels or on island resorts. The majority of Tongans abstain for the day. As well as the English-speaking congregation, the Beatties belong to this Tongan church. One of the college students, Lama, leads the children's choir. Feasts are a major part of Tongan life. The women spend all night cooking and preparing the food. They're held for weddings, funerals and birthdays. This feast was to mark a 16th birthday, a special date for Tongans. Bill and I have been to about, oh, must be at least two dozen since we've been here. Um, that was a special birthday, it was a 16th birthday. And I don't know whether you noticed that a little enclosure of tapa had been built, tapa cloths and uh, the birthday cakes were also placed on the tapa cloth as well. They have such a variety of stuff on the, on the feast table, especially fish, and of course the suckling pigs, but I'm afraid I can't, uh, I can't cope with them. Will it ever be possible to settle down in Wales after to coming the other side of the world for two years? Yes, it will. Uh, I have no doubt about that at all. We have good friends and we have uh, a family that will just receive us back into the community and it won't take us more than a few days just until we've got rid of our jet lag to feel, I suppose, that we haven't been away at all. I think you get a, a different perspective and a better perspective, I think, on to family life and the importance of perhaps your church to you. Uh, the Tongan people have a very, very caring way with their families. And I think we've got quite a bit to learn from them in that respect. I don't know whether, whether I ever shall feel like a retired person. Um, so long as I remain healthy, and um, so long as life is fairly kind to me, um, I think Bill and I will just go on just the way we are now. <laughs>